so we're at our farm um, in Hawke's Bay. So if I turn you around slowly, yeah. there's uh, some just cattle there looking down the, the river. And Napier's pretty much in, in that direction. I'm just sitting on the lawn of the house and we Fred's here making sure that I'm uh, <laughs> under control. Hello, Fred. So, hello. Well, he's growing, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's, um, we're just, just been for a walk collecting some pine cones. So oh, nice. Uh, in love with doing things like that at the moment, so it's pretty cool. And uh, it's looking pretty dry there, Sam? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, very dry. We had uh, 20 mils of rain probably a week, 10 days ago. But before that, we hadn't had rain for a few months. Um, yeah. But just starting to, to green up a little bit, but another 50 mils of rain would be quite nice, as, as every farmer wants. How did you get back to, to New Zealand? How did that all happen? Yeah, it was, um, it was pretty full on. We were living in a place called Ota in Japan, so it's about two hours from the airport. Um, we had a couple of other Kiwis that were staying in Japan. They drove us to the airport. Um, it was a bit of a scary feeling getting to the airport. There was no one around, everyone obviously keeping their distance. Um, no one was really talking or anything. But once we got on the plane, we knew a lot of the, the rugby players um, there. Uh, we landed um, at 9 o'clock in the morning, and Hannah's parents were there. So we borrowed one of their cars and drove from Auckland straight down here. Well, that's a huge change for you, isn't it, in a short period of time? Kind of had lockdown, or like a similar thing to a lockdown in Japan, until we obviously got the green light to come home. Um, so we, were, we kind of already had three or four weeks of it already. Um, Fred, is he right to sit here or not? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. G'day, Fred. How are you? <laughs> Eating your crackers. You got the same um, cut as your dad. <laughs> so once we got back here, um, it's been really nice to just take some time, um, you know, have, have a bit of time to actually explore, work out the priority list and what sits on top and what uh, is a nice to have. What's your bubble set up? We're pretty small, just Hannah, myself and the kids. Um, the workers are here on the farm, but we're just keeping the, the two metre distance. So our bubble's pretty small, but um, still can do a little bit of work without uh, without doing uh, putting anyone in danger, really, or yeah. increasing the bubble. So it's, it's quite good having a small one. Jim, this has been a massive change for you. Has there been any challenges for you in this change? Um, yeah, of course there's challenges. Um, looking at just the family side, obviously Hannah and myself, Kids are spending a lot more time together than, than normal, um, but that's actually a, a great change for us. Um, we're enjoying um, parenting together versus Hannah doing it when I'm not around and then me getting home and um, mucking up their routine. So it's been really good to actually team up together and do it together rather than um, one or one of us doing it at, at a time. So that's probably been the, the biggest change, but it's probably been the best change. Keeping in touch with you know, some of your, your mates, because you, I mean, in terms of the, your day job is a pretty social one, isn't it? You're, you're, you're around a team all the time and close with lots of other people. Have you stayed in touch or stayed connected with, with the rest of the team? Yeah, it's, um, it's funny, my situation at the moment. I've still got the group chats with the, my team Panasonic Wild Knights in Japan. So I'm still getting all those updates, but I'm also getting all the New Zealand team updates as well. So I'm kind of in the middle so if anything I've got you know more connection than I've than I've ever had but it, it's great it's cool finding out how people are spending their time whether they're stuck in a townhouse or um, they've got a bit of space rurally so um, there's some cool things going on there it, it's cool just staying connected whether it's a phone call or a, a text or a message and what about some of the um, sort of wider family and your friends of you finding that you're being a bit more proactive in that space? Well, I think what we're doing now, Zoom, FaceTime, um, WhatsApp, all those uh, messaging um, things on your device, it's pretty easy now to have a face-to-face -face conversation, a catch-up, whether it's socially or, or for work. The amount of times I've um, had conference calls in the last two weeks, it's amazing how much work you can get done. Um, you know, everyone's sitting in their kitchen or in a lounge and you know, the kids are jumping all over each other and, and those things, but it's um, pretty awesome. You can still get a lot of things accomplished. Yeah, it's, it's interesting talking with a number of 
farmers, I said one of the things they're learning through this is the, the things that really matter, <laughs> you know, like sort of really focus on, and actually the, the, and the importance of the relationships and staying connected. Um, yeah, just sort of interested in your thoughts on that. Um, when you go through hardship, and this is me speaking as a rugby player, you always go back to the things that um, are the highest on the priority list, whether it's making your tackles and winning your line-out ball, then everything else flows from there. If you get obsessed with that maybe one or two percent thing that in the big scheme of things doesn't actually change your business or how you are as a person. Um, so that's the way I kind of look at it. And it's the same for us being here on the farm. Like there's a thousand things to do every day, but you've got to look at it and go, okay, what's the, the best best thing to do at this current time? Is it to go fix that fence or is it to actually go, I'll fix that fence next week when there's actually animals in that paddock. I'll go fix the water trough where the, the animals are at the moment. It's interesting, actually, a, a farmer also said to us that one of the, risks of actually not having because there's been a lot of cancellation of um social events you know in the farming calendar yeah. and that's going to that's going to go on for a while and uh he said one of the real risks for him was that he just he'd just keep working when those things used to take him you know off the farm so uh because yeah. that is a bit of a, a, a trap as well do you think well exactly right i was speaking to my older brother who's now running his own his own farm he said oh, i was working really hard and he was going to go hunting uh, for the raw. So he was a big push to get to that date to go hunting for 10 days. And he was all excited and had everything set up. But then obviously the lockdown kicked in. And I spoke to him the other day and he goes, I just haven't stopped. I've been working flat out. He's still enjoying it, but he knows he has to take a bit of time out soon. Otherwise, he's going to just keep going the whole time without having a break. What would be your advice to like one of your mates who was feeling that he's just, you know, sort of working, this is just keeping on working all the time. What would you sort of be saying to him? Yeah, it's a easy trap to fall into because I know myself here, because there's so much to be done and um, so many things on the priority list, you know, I could get up super early every day and work right through till dark, but that's not the priority for us at the moment. It's, yeah, I can do some of those things, but actually spending time with my wife and my kids is time that I'm never going to get back. And it's actually really good having that opportunity to do it. So having the balance would be my advice to the people that are at home. And if they're working hard, they're working hard, which is great. But have that balance with, with family time.